Hi, welcome to my channel Mostly Knitting. I'm Tash and I'm recording on Wednesday the 22nd of March 2023 and I'm here in Sydney, Australia. Uh, if you're new, thanks for coming to check me out and if you're a returning viewer, thanks for coming back. Uh, so this is a channel just about my, so if you haven't been here before, it's a channel mostly about my knitting and the projects that I'm making and then if there's any other craft I'll add that in as well and then a little bit of chatter about my week at the end. So I'll just get started. Um, I, this week I have two finished objects. I have one new cast on, got a bit of progress on my whips, a faux from the vault which I'm wearing and at the end a bit of chatter about my week. Alright, so my finished objects. My first one is the Muscle Bra Hat and this is by Sol de Teague. I knit it in two different colours. This is the Skein Uptown Sock in Wisp and this is the Hedgehog Skinny Singles in Wish. And yeah, I'm really happy with how those two play together. Um, I was a bit limited by the amount. I only had 46 and a half grams of the Wish and I'm not sure why, actually I do know why. I started with this color because I knew I wanted to use this color and then I was tossing up between Wish and another color. But then of course I had more of this yarn than this and then I had to work out or well, when do I stop to make sure that I'm not gonna run out on this. So I ended up after the increases, I did 75 rows and I actually had a feeling that I was going to run out of yarn um, of the Wish and I think I, you know, I had a feeling I went maybe a couple of rows too far. Uh, so then I started knitting on this one and I did actually only get 70 rows of the wish before I had to start the decreases once I, you know, I, I weighed and did the math and realized I needed about six, 9.6 grams for the decreases. Um, so I gave myself only a tiny bit of buffer. So I only ended up getting 70 rows of the, of the wish. But it actually turned out because this, yarn, um, the row gauge is just slightly more on the wish than it is on the wisp and they it actually, like if I fold it up, right on the change, that works out really oh, yeah, pretty well. Yeah, it's only a smidge, maybe that's just because of the way it blocked. I'm pretty happy with how that came out. Um, so the way you, um, actually one thing that I, um, one thing that I noticed is after I'd already done all the decreases, I'd forgotten to weave in my ends on at the changeover. And then when I was blocking it, of course, I could see that it was, you know, that stitch was becoming really elongated. And so I ended up having to actually pull the end out and put it on a tapestry needle and duplicate stitch a few stitches and then thread it through to the inside and then sort of thread it a fair way down, pull it a bit snug, cut it, and then let it pull through. So um, I don't always duplicate stitch when I, you know, change colors, but in this case I had to, I didn't really have any other choice because there was no, it was completely connected there, like, and closed off. There was no way I could get to the inside. So duplicate stitch was, um, if you find that you've done this on a muscle bra hat, you've forgotten to weave in your ends. If you pull out that end and do duplicate stitch and then push it through to the inside and sort of push it a fair way down and then scrunch up the yarn, cut it, and then it will actually come through. Maybe I'll demonstrate that another time. Um, yeah, I wasn't thinking about it at the time. I was a bit like, oh no, I can't. How can I weave in the ends? Anyway, it worked out fine. So I'll just try it on so you can see. So I'll push push this in. Um, I actually really like this. I think this is what I'll do from now on because you get a two for one. Um, and even if I had a whole skein, I could do half, half, and then maybe one would be a gift. Um, anyway, so that's one way of wearing it. And you can obviously wear it like sort of slouchy like that. Or you can fold it up. Hmm. Hair in the <laughs> hair in my eyes. That's not so great. Um, yeah, you can fold it up like that, or you can have it the um, the other way around. You can go that way, and you know, obviously, you can have it just just that color. You can. That color's peeking through. Obviously, it must be slightly longer, but you can definitely rock 
okay this is not <laughs> working out so well um like that I actually don't mind that 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 little color you know you just you're gonna have to be a little bit careful if, as you fold it through push it in a little bit more <sighs> okay try again like that you know sort of slouchy or you can knit it <laughs> knit it you can wear it that way oh that was a lot harder than it should be okay yeah so we've got two different ways of wearing it um and yeah i can see that was muscle brew number 12 so i can see myself making more of those and i just think um you know a fingering weight um is a really nice weight of yarn to make this in and i'm really hoping that it will be warm enough because um like I find, you know, at least like for going to the snow or something, a hand knit beanie is not usually warm enough. But with like, if you do it like that, that's effectively four layers over your ears. So yeah, and I think actually, I think that's probably the way I'll, I like the accent being the, the darker color, which actually works probably pretty well if this one's a little bit longer. Anyway, really happy with how that came out. And um, so that ended up being about 46 gram, 47 grams of each, so about 94 grams. So just under a, a total one skein of yarn. And if I had two individual balls, I could do you know, make two hats and then it's still like a two, two different hats, but you can keep one and give one to someone else. Anyway, so that's, um, that's the Muscle Bra hat by Assorted Teague. There's a few different hat patterns that are similar to that, but I, that's the one that I got and I really, I really like it. Obviously, I really like it. I've made 12 of them. So that's my first finished object. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I wanted to mention. You know, oh yes, this is, this is how much, this is yarn chicken, right? That's how much I had left of the wish. So I was really relying on my math skills because I actually worked out just how, it was a very small amount, but I worked out how much yarn one stitch was and then how many stitches I had for the decreases and then that multiplied to 9.6 grams so I think I only left myself maybe 9.7 grams so yes yay for math um, that's my I didn't sort of fully introduce myself at the beginning if you've haven't watched my earlier videos um, I'm a high school maths teacher um, yeah so yay for maths um, so that's the muscle bra hat. That's my finished object number one. Now my finished object number two, I'm kind of cheating a little bit um, because um, here's my first sock. This is um, the uh, fingering weight gusset heel socks by Wendy Johnson in Socks Yeah, uh, the fingering weight version by Coop Knits and it's in the colorway Ruby. So I knit the sock on a 2.25 millimeter needle and then I switched to a two millimeter needle for a one by one twisted rib. And then I bound off. Now I don't remember, this is a problem. Like I bound off, you can see that there. I bound off definitely on a larger needle. Took myself out of the, on a larger needle than a two mil. Like, and I thought maybe I'd bound off with a 2.25 millimeter needle. And then I did that on this one and that that is way tighter. I'll put the two together. You can see this one here that does fit compared to the other one. Like that is way, way tighter. So I don't remember what needle I used. Maybe I used a 2.75 mil. Maybe I used a much, because I didn't do any kind of special bind off. I just bound off in pattern, but maybe I used a much larger needle. So anyway, Regardless, I have to rip it out because it doesn't. I can't get it on my foot at all. So, um, and you know what's so annoying too? I don't know why I did this right. Look how much yarn I had left. I had tons left. And yet, that's the tail that I left myself. So that's not enough. Like if I'm going to have to undo this bind off and bind off much looser, that's not enough to play with, which means I'm going to have to like join in another ball of yarn for the bind off and I'm really annoyed about myself there was no reason like I could have tried it on before I cut it um you know and uh, anyway so you live and learn I still make mis lots of mistakes so yeah anyway that's I'm going to have to join in um and I'll have to rip it out so it's kind of finished and it's kind of not because it's not wearable right now 
but um, it won't take me long to fix. I just have to try a few different, I think it was a 2.75 mil, maybe even a three mil needle that I used for the bind off. Um, yeah, but I won't make that mistake again. I won't cut the yarn until I've actually tried it on my foot and make sure it fits. So right, so that's those socks are finished. Um, so that's two finished objects for the week. I forgot to mention with the um, with the socks when I went to find some two millimeter needles, I um, I actually found them on the floor of the office, and I I picked them up and I thought, oh gosh, I don't remember them that needle having such a short tip. And I started knitting with it, and of course I started knitting with that end, and then I realized, hang on a minute, what's happened to that needle? So there's the rest of that needle. So it must have somehow fallen down, and I think my husband has rolled over it um, in the office with, with a rolly chair. So that needs to go in the bin. Thankfully, I did have a second um, two, uh, two millimeter needle that I used, so yeah. Um, as you, if you saw my earlier videos, I have a very large stack of needles of all different sizes, but I actually, because I don't use two millimeter needles very often, I only have two sets of two mil needles. So anyway, now I only have one. Okay, so my work's in progress. Um, the ebb dress is almost done. So I'm onto the last color. And look, it is a little, a little crazy, but I am, I think I'm gonna like it. It's. Um, I'm down to the last colour. I think I've got maybe maybe tw uh, 25 rows to go and um, I've got plenty, oops, plenty of yarn. Um, yeah, actually this, this is the leftovers. This is the leftovers of all of them, um, the, of the five other colours and um, yeah, I'll finish off with this one. I do need a bit more of, of these two colors. I'll have to go back into those to do the, um, to do the sleeves. But I reckon I'll, um, I'm sure I'll have that done by next week. So, um, so that dress, sorry, that's the Ebb Dress by Olga Baraya Kafelian. And I'm using um, two of the yarns. This one, this one and this one are Skein Sisters, the yarn shop that I work at. Skein Sisters Fabulous Sock, that's Fairy Dust, and that's Aliens Attack, that grey. And the other four um, colours are Dingo Dye Works Ridgy Didge, so they're all fingering weight. And so that's um, this one, this one, this one, and this one. But she's not dying anymore, which is a bit of a shame because it's really lovely, really lovely pastel -y colours. Um, anything, I'm not doing that, that pattern has pockets in it, I'm not doing pockets. It was meant to be like a, it's definitely, it's designed for yarn held double, which I am doing, yarn, the yarns held double, but um, it was meant to be like a, um, uh, what do you call it when you use two, a mild, you know, you use two different colors and then, you know, change one color at a time. Um, and I'm not doing it mild, I'm just doing it like with some solid blocks of color. And yeah, it's pretty, it's a bit of a fun, fun, you know, pastel -y dress. So I'll hopefully be wearing that in the next, um, my next podcast. Uh, so that's the ebb dress. The uh, other thing that I've got on the needles is the, um, a second, I finished my first ranunculus um, a couple of months ago and I knit that one with a, um, two lace weight yarns, two different lace weight yarns. And this time I'm using the same lace weight yarn, which is the mohair, mohair silk. Julie Asselin Anatolia in the colorway Clementine. And I'm, yeah, I'm just using the same yarn held double. And where am I up to in that? So I did a tutorial for the um, crochet provisional cast on and also the tubular cast on. And what was the next bit? The tubular cast on and also the right lifted, right, yeah, right lifted increase. Um, and then a couple of people actually asked me to do a tutorial on further stages down the pattern and so I thought I might do obviously I've, I've gone a little bit too far on these ones but I'm going to make another one so when I make another one I'll do um, some more tutorials on this um, you know this kind of this stitch here which is really pretty this sort of loopy swoopy stitch and then there's some um, slip stitches then there's like a little lace pattern down here and then I'm up just up to the part where I'm about to do some more swoopy stitches and then some raglan increases. So, um, you know, I made some good progress on that. 
and this colors you know it's it's a bit in your face but I actually really like it I've got some pants that I think it will go really nicely with some sort of like navy pants um, yeah so that's that's coming along and that's going pretty quickly because it's on six millimeter needles I just put it on it that's not what I'm actually knitting on I um, I'm knitting on a smaller circular but I just put it on that so I could show it a little bit easier and try it on so that's the second version of ranunculus and the other cast on um, the new cast on is actually a pair of sport weight socks it's from the yarn that I bought recently on D stash and which is the skein yarn sport weight and I think it's it's colorway even tied and when it arrived I thought it was really pretty but as I'm knitting it I just don't really love it mm, it's okay but it's just a little maybe a little dull in the colors it's not really um, yeah it's funny like it's probably not that different to the other colors that I'm knitting here but maybe it's just the way it's knitting up with a few spots of darker that I just am not loving um, it's a, it's okay but the, it was meant to be a gift for someone and I just don't know that this is going to be really in her kind of their her kind of colors so I might I'll finish it but I might see if my elder daughter wants them um, I haven't knit a lot of socks for my kids and, and they do wear them sometimes especially in winter you know around the house so I'll see if my elder daughter would like these and in my plans I'll talk about some more yarn that I'm going to purchase from my yarn shop uh, yarn shop for the the present that I'm thinking of making for a friend so um, this is when I do sport weight socks so this is also Wendy Johnson but her toe up socks with a gusset here with the sport weight version um, which just basically uses less less stitches um, very similar concept in the way the heel and the way it's constructed um, I did Judy's Magic Cast on 24 stitches and then increased to 52 and then now I'm just working my way up the foot and that's on a 2.75 mil needle. So they're my works in progress at the moment. Um, what uh, Faux from the Vault is next. Um, so what I'm wearing, this is um, the Shifty Sweater by Andrea Maui. And I knit it in the yarn that was um, not the colors that it was designed for but the yarn that it was designed for and that spin cycle dyed in the wool and I just loved knitting this um, it's I, I think it made it in three weeks I um, it is long sleeve but I'll just um, I'll stand up and show you so the the colors that I used this purple I used four skeins of this purpley color and that's nostalgia and then my three contrast colors were Narcissus, which is this sort of yellowy color, and Robin's Egg, which is kind of these blues, sort of blues and light, light blues and grays, and Melancholia is this dark, um, this dark blue here, that's Melancholia. So um, I really enjoyed knitting, oh, sorry about that. I really enjoyed knitting with the Spin Cycle, uh, it is quite an expensive yarn and here in Australia it's you know with the exchange rate and everything it is quite pricey um, but I was I was just so I fell in love with it and I thought I really want to make it I would happily make another one but to make it a little bit more affordable what I would do is for the four skeins I would use a, like a commercial slightly less expensive yarn um, and I think you can get away with that and then the other colors then maybe I'd use the three skeins of spin cycle um, one of the things I noticed about the yarn I really enjoyed knitting with it one of the things I noticed is that the yard like the yardage I know it's sold by yardage but like this robin's egg color I think it was only like 44 grams so the skeins are pretty light you're definitely not getting any extra like you might in some yarns where it's 100 grams but you get 115 or whatever um, yeah, but it was like it was really nice to work with it feels it's lovely and like I'm only wearing a tank underneath it it's really next to the skin soft um, and the stitch pattern is just slip stitches so I'll come a little bit closer at least show you slip stitches with some pearl bumps um, and that's how you get the the changes in color so it's it's not feral there's no um, the floats are just Sorry, excuse me lifting my top I, I am wearing something underneath just a tank Oops. Um, it's just slip stitches it's not like you're just um, you know 
that's why you've, you've got these floats in the back. They're not, um, you're not actually, um, what do you call it? You're not working with two colors at the same, at the same time. So it's not fair on. Yep, and I just, I absolutely, and that's how you end up with sort of these, um, I guess these sort of vertical, vertical bits in it. Uh, yeah, anyway, I really, really love it. Well, um, let me think about the pattern. So I did the tubular cast on, and but I didn't use the one that was in the pattern. I used the one that's quite similar to ranunculus and the method that I used in the stasis pullover. And that's where you do a crochet provisional cast on and then with waist yarn, and then you do a knit one yarn over into every all the stitches. So you double your stitches, then you do four rounds of double knit where you sort of knit one, slip one, knit one, slip one, knit one, slip one, and then you slip one, purl one, slip one, purl one, etc. You do four rounds of that, so two repeats, and then you start with your, um, then you start on the main, um, the main, the rest of the knitting. So yeah, I really, really like it, really happy with it. Um, the only thing that was actually also interesting in the pattern, which surprises me, and I think sometimes it's just the way patterns are written, that they're just written to make it a bit easier to write rather than what makes sense in the pattern. So when you did the first batch of increases, it said to do, the pattern said knit three, or make one knit three, no, what was it? Make one, make one knit four 24 times and then make one knit three 44 times and the, and you start from the middle of the back so i was like we're knitting we're doing not too many increases sort of around here and then a bunch more increase like a more frequent increases over here it just didn't seem balanced so i changed it from instead of make one knit four 24 times and then make one knit three 44 times I changed it to make one knit four 12 times, then do the, all the make one knit threes 44 times, and then make one knit four 12 times. So that the, you know, the less spaced out increases were around the center back, if that makes sense. Um, it's a small change, but I just don't really understand why you, you do it that way. Um, yeah, so that's the, um, that's the, a shifty sweater and um, it's sort of got I guess you call that bracelet length sleeves I don't do that length sleeves very often but yeah I think it really works with this sweater I really like it yeah so and um, interesting thing about this sweater is actually one that um, my teenage daughter asked to borrow which I said no because like I really like it. I just made it um, I'd probably let her borrow it now but um, she doesn't always look after her clothes that well and I just made it and it was quite expensive and I wanted to get to wear it a little bit before it ended up perhaps in the wash and felted or something that so yeah if she borrows it like I need to make sure it comes back and things that she borrows don't, don't always come back so uh, yes so very happy with that I would make another one to make it a bit more affordable I'd use a different base than spin cycle but if I could afford it I would because it's beautiful yarn so um, that's my faux from the vault now purchases, I did actually make some purchases this week. Again, it was not really fully thought out. It was on D-Stash and I just saw it and thought it looked pretty. Um, but I do think, I sort of have a plan. I don't have an immediate plan for it. Um, so I bought these two skeins of Madeline Tosh Pashmina in the colorway Margot. And so they're quite variegated. And I think what I initially was thinking about them for was that Anna, tea I'll put a picture up um, of that and I really like that tea but I think this is too variegated for that I if I'm going to make that tea I want to make that in a semi-solid I think it looks really pretty in the pink colorway and the brown colorway that it's um, photographed in but I just think that's going to be a little bit too much for me I think this would be better in a shawl I'm not sure if it's enough for dotted rays dotted rays is a designed for fingering weight and this is sport weight I'm not sure if two skeins is going to be enough that's 660 meters it might not be quite enough I mean you can finish dotted rays kind of almost anywhere but it might just not the wingspan might not be enough um, yeah but I think it would make a really nice dotted rays so anyway that's my purchases and um, I just have to stay off the D stash I think that would be that would be the plan I really want to 
be much more intentional and know exactly what I'm gonna make when I buy something and it's like what I want to make now. So anyway, that's what I did buy them. Oh, the other thing I bought um, is sewing related, but it's kind of knitting related. Um, and I think I mentioned it in the last video. I, I saw some kits up for the um, Grand Line Studio town bag and field bag. Um, so I'll put some picks up that, um, and so I bought them, but I had them, the shipping to Australia was really bad. It was $66 US and I just can't do it. I can't make myself pay what's in Australian dollars, like $110 Australian in shipping. I just, I can't. And my husband's American and his family, his dad and his dad's wife live in California and I know that he's going to be going there sometime this year. I don't know when, but we're already in March. So, and I don't need it urgently. So anyway, I had it shipped to um, my in-laws in California and it's already there. Um, the nice thing is I've got the pattern already. So it's a digital pattern. The kit came with a digital pattern and all the fabric and the um, handles and grommets and things. Um, but I think, but because I've got the pattern itself, I could make up like a version of it in the meantime and then um, when he goes and comes back he'll bring it back um, then I can make the you know so I can sort of make a practice one um, but the the fabric itself one of the reasons I bought the kits is the fabric is quite a heavy weight and I really like how the bags stand up so I'm thinking like I would like to make um, I would and it was a bit of like it was a bit of a sale on like, not sale but like if you bought it all in one the pattern itself was quite a bit cheaper so I thought, well, I can make it now and then um, sort of a practice one and it won't maybe stand up as well or, or I could put some interfacing or I could do something or some starch or something, um, but I could at least try it now. So I haven't bought any fabric for it. I haven't even sort of looked, but I've got the patterns now and the kits are there waiting for me for when my husband goes next time. So my upcoming plans, I mentioned with that sock, the sport weight sock that I that I started, that was going to be a gift for a friend, but I just don't think it's gonna, gonna work for her. So um, because I'm teaching at the yarn shop this Saturday and next Saturday, I'm actually teaching a socks class on Saturday afternoon. And so um, they have socks, um, the coop knits, they also have the uh, DK version of socks here and they've got it in this really lovely i'll put a picture up here this colorway fleet so and they've got four skeins i only need two so i'm going to pick up a couple of skeins of that and i'll use that to make some socks for my friend um and i think when you're making socks for someone when you're not 100 percent sure of their size i think her size is pretty similar to mine but dk weight, weight socks they're going to go a little bit faster they'll be really nice house socks and you don't have to worry quite as much about the fit because it's not going to be, you know, um, something they're going to have to wear in a shoe or whatever. They can just wear it around the house. And then I can work out if that actually, if the size is really right, if I want to make another version in fingering weight. So that's in my plans. I'll, I'll pick that up on Saturday and, um, and start those because it's a birthday gift. Um, what are my other plans? I will make another Ilha. I still haven't cast it on. I was talking about casting it on, but I, I haven't done it yet. Um, I'll make another Ilha in the Life in the Long Grass Chirp. I just love this colour. It's just so, so pretty. So um, I will make another one of those dresses. Um, I haven't started it yet, but it is coming. I'm going to make a pink sorrel and a purple sorrel now that I'm almost finished with... Um, all of you know these colors and I'll put a picture up of the the yarn that I already have in the pink and in the purple to sort of say this is kind of what I've got to work with because um, I was trying to when I showed it the first time I was trying to hold all the balls it was ridiculous so I'll just put a picture up um, of all of the, the the yarn that I've got so far for those two sorrels uh, I also am going to make I will make the climb socks um, but now that I've got, I already have a pair of socks on the needles and I have another pair ready to cast on, that I need to cast on, I won't, that, that's gonna be sort of on the back burner. I won't start those for a while. And the other thing I will start soon is the um, Ranunculus in the Barocco remix for a worsted weight top version. And I will use that to do the extra tutorials. That shouldn't be too dark. I'll see how I go. That should work okay for the tutorials for um for how to do those um you know sort of the 
the swoopy stitches on the ranunculus um, in this white yarn. It might even be a little bit easier to see because I won't be holding the yarn double, it'll just be one strand of yarn. But obviously it's the same concept whether you're, whether you're you know, doing that with two yarns or one yarn. Uh, so that's my plans. I don't have any sewing this week. So just a bit of chat about my week. Uh, last Thursday when I recorded, I, I started to feel a little bit unwell after I finished recording and I just, um, yeah, I was feeling a bit tired. Normally I go in really early on a Friday morning um, for a class at 7 a.m. but I just decided I needed to sleep in a little bit so I went in and taught later that day and that day um, or that night I went out for sushi with my husband for a date night and then we um, the show that we're watching at the moment is The Americans. Um, we're watching that on binge and we're only up to season two so we're very late in this it's like six seasons long and I think it was um, it's been out for years and years and we just noticed that it's ending on binge on the 31st of March. And I was like, we're not gonna watch four and a half seasons by the 31st of March, it's the 22nd now. So we we're both a bit like, what do we do? And then I thought, well, maybe if it leaves binge, it's going somewhere else. Or I guess you can always, you know, um, I don't know, my husband said he'd figure it out. So. I'm not sure if anyone knows where it's going to, if it's, if you're in Australia, I guess it's different in Australia and the US. Um, yeah, that was a bit of a bummer. So I was like, you know, once, once we sort of start on a, sh a show, we sort of usually watch it all the way through. And I really like it when there's a whole bunch of seasons already there and you don't have to wait. Um, so we've been watching quite a few of those and I'm really enjoying that, that show. Um, Saturday, I still wasn't feeling enough, well enough for um, park run. So I went to the beach and it's been so hot here lately. Um, today's a little bit cooler, um, but like it was 36 degrees, which was like 97 Fahrenheit on Saturday. And we were going to go for a bushwalk. And then I was like, we can go for a bushwalk in April, you know, May when it's cooler. It's, you know, 36 degrees, let's go to the beach. And the water temperature was 24 degrees, which is um, Celsius, which is so beautiful. And yeah, it was just, it's just such a lovely, and it's only, it's a half hour drive from us. So that was really nice. I don't, you know, even though it's only half an hour away, we don't get to the beach as often as, you know, as we should, so, or as we could. So that was really nice. I think also, cause you know, my husband plays baseball or my son plays baseball on the weekend or I'm teaching knitting or we have church on Sunday or, you know, just depending, there's always a bit happening, but given it's only half an hour away, I, I'd like to go more often. Um, but it is coming to fall now. So I thought we'd take the opportunity before the, while the, the water temperature is still warm and um, you know, and the, and the weather's still warm. So that was Saturday. Um, Sunday, um, just running around with kids, dropping my daughter to work, and um, I ended up just watching church online instead of going in. Sometimes I do that, like if I just am running a bit short of time. Um, it is still being recorded, so they started recording during COVID. It's nicer being there, um, but you know, in a pinch, and after I'd already done running around, I thought, no, I just wanna, you know, um, watch online and then in the afternoon I went and visited my dad um, and played some 500 with him. He's taken a bit of a turn for the worse and so he's got emphysema um, but he also has um, diabetes and his kidney, he has chronic kidney disease and his kidneys are causing a lot of problems now with swollen legs and feet and things and yeah I think he's he's sort of feeling like his time's almost up and he's okay with it <laughs> um, but I'm not so okay with it so that's um, that's a bit hard so I'm really trying to get there at least three times a week to visit so I saw him on Sunday and then I saw him again on Tuesday that's yesterday and I'll go again tomorrow so I'll try and go three times a week and just visit him but he's starting to get quite tired and he sort of even nods off while I'm there so yeah, that's, anyway, I just want to see him as much as I can. So that was Sunday, um, Monday's my really long day at work. And then yesterday um, was just, you know, work and laundry and jobs and things. And here we are, it's Wednesday. So it's been a good week. Um, I am starting to feel a bit better now, seeing I, I was starting to feel a bit unwell last Thursday, but yeah, I'm starting to feel a bit better. But I actually almost feel like I just want a bit of a break from running and I might just do some more walking, um, just, give my body a bit of a break. Um, this week that I've got planned coming up, um, oh, I'm not sure, I have a feeling, um, so I'm teaching at the yarn shop on Saturday 
and I have a feeling that um, my husband and my son are playing in the, I know they, they are playing in the same team now for winter baseball. And I have a feeling they're gonna play on Saturday rather than Sunday, so that's a bit of a shame. Um, but you know, there's a whole season. Um, but I'm looking forward to actually going and watching their games together. That will be quite sweet. Um, I hope, yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm teaching at the Yarn Shop on Saturday. I was meant to teach all day, um, but my morning class got cancelled because it was the morning class was like a knitting beyond the basics, which is just a like a skills based class. And they were saying, which I think is an interesting thing, the classes that are for um, just skills don't tend to sell as well as classes that involve an actual, an actual project. So they're going to switch that class up from a skills based class to an actual like knit a beanie class, which I think is a really good thing. And I, I prefer if I'm going to take a class, I really like a project class and I like teaching project classes. So the socks one, we won't obviously finish a whole pair of socks, but we'll get started on it and, you know, learn Judy's magic cast on and then increasing for the toe and then how to, you know, you know, working up the sock and doing it in magic, magic loop, that's how I teach it. And then I have some samples so that are already at the place of where you um, do the heel. So you know how you, you, well, for a gusset you increase, for the gusset heel and then you um, do some short rows to uh, finish off the heel. So I have samples because people won't get up to that part of the sock in the class. And then on those samples, I also show um, Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off. So that class is on Saturday and I think they're going, to, not for this Saturday, but they'll change instead of like a, a skills based class for knitting, um, you know, like next step, sort of steps or beyond the basics in knitting, we'll do a, how to knit a beanie. Um, so knitting it in, so learning the long tail cast on, which was in that class before anyway, but we'll do it specifically and they'll make it a kit class, which I think is also really good as a teacher. It's really helpful if everyone's using the same kind of yarn um, and you know that the yarn works for the pattern. Um, so that pattern's just being written up now. And I'll, I think my first class on that is the 29th of April. So I'm looking forward to teaching that. Um, yeah, and I am looking forward to teaching this Saturday and I'll be able to pick up the, so the socks yarn for my friend. Um, yeah, so that's it. That's what's coming up in my week. Um, I hope everyone is keeping well. And yeah, I will do, once I start this, um, once I cast this on, I'll do some more tutorials on the rest of Ranunculus. So yeah, anyway, hope you have a great week and I'll see you next week. Bye.